How's everybody doing? Good. Good. How are you doing? I'm doing. I'm, on the wind. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Did you mention about chicken wings? We don't have chicken wings. Yeah, I don't know. What's that smell? It smells delicious. How are you feeling? Obviously, uh, coming off of a UFC debut and, and to get the win like that. Yeah, I'm feeling great. Um, it was getting kind of crazy at the end of that second round. I was thinking to myself, man, we're gonna have to go another round of this. But yeah, I was able to 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 put him away. Were you expecting it to go down like that? Uh, I knew I eventually was going to catch him, and I just had to stay composed and just make sure the follow-up shots were, were fight-ending. And in terms of <clears throat> coming to London, you know, what was your initial reaction to, to coming to London to fight and, and to fight a guy on, on, on his home soil? Uh, I'm excited. I, I think most of my career I had to go and fight people in their backyard, so it's nothing new for me. What did you think about the, the crowd and the atmosphere out there? Oh, it was cool. It was awesome. Of, of course, they're going to, you know, cheer for their guy. But uh, on my way out of the octagon, um, on my way back here, you know, I, I felt like I got a lot of love from the fans. So I, I appreciate all them. I appreciate everyone for coming out to the fight. And, and what was the overall week like for you? Because, of course, you, you, you missed weight on your first attempt. Um, was there anything that perhaps went wrong in the run up to that? Or, or you know, what did you put that down to? You know, I have another nickname, uh, Johnny Come Lately. You know, so sometimes I, you know, I'm running late, so. But uh, the plan was to make weight, for sure. Did that have anything to do with perhaps the travel? How, how do you adjust um, to, have to having to do that? Yeah, I, I really think, uh, m like, my body definitely, I probably could have sweat another five pounds if I, if I needed to. Uh, I think it was a little bit of a, you know, kind of like a, a mental drain. Um, I didn't really get much sleep um, this week. I actually felt, <laughs> I felt like crap today. Uh, but, you know, I just didn't let everyone know, anyone know and just was like trying to stay positive and, you know, a fight's a fight, you know, if you can't always, you can't always be prepared, you know, someone might attack you outside the parking lot, you're not going to say, oh, hey, man, uh, wait a second, uh, let's meet back here in two weeks, I'm, I'm going to train for two weeks and then I'll be ready, all right? You can't do that, sometimes you just got to fight. And, of course, you called out Paddy Pimlet in the octagon, why, why him? <laughs> you know, to be 100% honest, I just, you know, I got legend Michael Biz being right here. Uh, you know, he, he didn't really ask me a question. He just kind of put the mic in front of me, and I was like, uh, I kind of choked. Um, really, uh, uh, maybe for the, you know, at some point, you know, maybe uh, I'll, I'll try to make my way to lightweight. But who I really wanted to call out was uh, I heard uh, MVP is a, is a free agent, and there was talks of him coming to the UFC to fight. And, uh, you know, I'd really like to come back to London, uh, try to <laughs> sleep a little better the next time and you know I don't think MVP can uh, can hang with the wrestlers in this division so you know I would love to give the fans here in London at the O2 a freaking awesome striking fight um, and I think me and MVP could could put on a show for the crowd for sure. Do you embrace the verbal warfare side of things as well because you're calling out two guys that aren't afraid of using a microphone and you don't seem to be afraid of using a microphone either. So is that something that you're looking forward to, those uh, lively press conferences? Yeah, you know, I think uh, it, it brings an extra level of excitement. You know, I'm not really like a, like a mad or angry person. Like, I really don't hate anybody or anything like that. But I think, uh, you know, that energy, they could kind of bring that excitement and that energy without it being like negative, more like a fun, kind of type of energy rivalry, you know, that's why, you know, I made a comment about Patty's haircut. To be honest, when I was freaking four years old, I, I had that same haircut, you know, and eventually my hair started to get a little curly, you know, but I, I have baby photos of me with that same exact haircut that he has, so. Did you enjoy the dog fight in there with uh, Danny Roberts as well? And it was a uh, quite a sad scene afterwards for him as well. You know, it's a three fight losing streak for him and he was uh, very emotional on his knees crying afterwards. How does it make you feel? It's a, it's a brutal sport, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we're, we're just all how you're trying to just make a living for our families, you know, and uh, you know, as, as men, we gotta be providers and, and leaders for our families. So, you know, it, it's tough. It's, it's tough to go through that loss because it's like, it's not just you fighting for yourself out there. You're fighting for your family, you know what I mean? I, I got. You know, I coach Muay Thai back in Las Vegas at Syndicate, and I got a lot of students that look up to me. Um, since winning Contender Series, I cornered, I cornered somebody every month up until May this year. 
I, I cornered fighters, uh, sometimes seven fighters in one night, sometimes 10 to 15 fighters over a weekend Muay Thai tournament. So like there were some months where I, I cornered two, three times in a month. So I was like, you know, after Contender Series, getting ready for my debut, um, um, I, I had some injuries and stuff and I had to completely, you know, take a bunch of time off training. Uh, and then that's when I kind of was just like so invested in coaching and, and, and trying to help young fighters in, in, in ways where I felt like, you know, 14 years ago, if only someone took me a little serious, more serious and, and, and gave me the help that, you know, I needed, you know, so I just try to be that person for these young fighters and, you know, help them get fights and then, you know, be there to corner them and, and things like that. So I was like really invested in that. And then I just had to tell them, like, hey, it's my turn now, guys. And I had to take a little bit of time off and started coaching less classes, doing less, you know, personal lessons and stuff and, you know, focus on myself. And what did you make of being in enemy territory in England tonight? I think you won over all the fans in there with that performance. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, like I said, uh, you know, I, I, I've been there before, you know, majority of my fights, uh, you know, my amateur career was all in Las Vegas. They have a pretty solid amateur scene there. Uh, but once I went pro, they really don't have any regional pro fights in Vegas to build your record. So like I was always going to other places to fight, you know, so, so I'm used to it. You know, I've, I've fought in Hawaii twice, you know, I fought in China, I fought in Thailand. So, you know, other states, so I, I'm used to going to enemy territory. That's just what we do. Final one, if the MVP fight doesn't happen, if he doesn't sign with the UFC, and if you're not dropping down to meet Paddy anytime soon, who at welterweight would you want? Man, that, 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 that's tough. There's a, there's a lot of good fighters. Um, I know that there's that card coming up in, uh, in Vegas at the T-Mobile, uh, September 16th. Uh, you know, I'd love to fight maybe, uh, you know, a, a Mexican fighter on that card. You know, that, that would be pretty exciting. Well done on the performance. Thank you. John, it's your hair. Um, you mentioned, obviously, Paddy and, and spoke about his hair. Do you think you rock the better haircut than him? Definitely. Let's let's make a vote. Someone someone put the vote up. We'll, we'll run a poll on Twitter. Yeah. Um, did the the mullet come into consideration and sacrifice in that when you you missed White the first time round? Did you ever consider sacrificing the mullet? Yeah, I was I was when we were cutting the 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 last pound. I there, there was some moments where I told my coach I was like, man, ju just 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 cut cut it off. And I said, hey, just leave a little piece of the mullet in the back. We'll make it to a little you know, a little Jedi Padawan braid. I said, hey man, I'm not a Jedi Knight anymore. I'm demoted. I'm a Padawan because I didn't make it. So I was, I was ready to let some of the hair go and just have like a little braid hanging by because I'm a Star Wars fan. Congratulations. On that. Thank you. Hey John, you just won for me. How did you get the nickname, the Slugger Knot? Man, I think, I, honestly, I think it was something I, I came up with as a joke. Um, the name I was rocking with b before was the Paradox. You know, because I... And that kind of came out from, uh, I had broke my foot at some point in my career and uh, the recovery was rough. And when I first started training again, I couldn't have my right foot as my rear foot anymore. It just like, there was just so much pain and I, I wanted to train. So I was able to have it as my, my lead foot and kind of have like a flat, a flat front foot, you know, y using my jab and stuff. And then, you know, it's kind of what, you know, and I, I, I learned a lot. I grew a lot as a fighter because of that and kind of realized like, man, uh, Southpaw's weakness is another Southpaw. And I seen that tonight when I, there was a couple times I went Southpaw and it's like, he couldn't, he couldn't stop my jab. I was like, dang, this is, is kind of easy. You know, maybe I should just stay Southpaw the rest of the fight, you know? But uh, yeah, the, the Slugger Knot was kind of like, like a joke name. And then, man, when I would tell everybody it and I, I would say my little punchline for it, they were just like, dude, we love that. That's, man, forget the paradox. That sounds, that sounds, that's not cool at all. You got to be the Slugger Knot. So I just, Started rocking that. Well, well done tonight. Do you know what? I love watching you perform tonight. You look like you're enjoying every single minute. You clearly love the sport. Even now, you've got a big smile on your face. I know you've won. But what does the sport mean to you? Aside from performing around the world and getting the victories, what does this sport mean to you? Man, it, it means everything. From, from, from a young age, you know, when I started to learn, you know, when I started to, to realize that, like, you can get respect with your fist and I and, and I'm not a mean person like I wasn't getting in like lots of fights growing up and stuff but um, You know very quickly at a young age. I realized like man people respect me because of this and uh, you know I started 
getting into training and things like that. And um, I was never really, I wasn't the most academic person. And where I really found my calling was, 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 was training martial arts. And really since 16 years old, I've just invested all my time into, into training. And you know, there was points in my career where I, was, where I you know, wasn't managed. I wasn't being managed and I just was taking hard fights, whatever I could get. And uh, you know, there was points where you know, I was jumping back and forth from Muay Thai and, and MMA and I didn't know what I was gonna do. I was like, I, I honestly thought I screwed everything up. I was like, man, I, I, I did this all wrong. And you know, I, and then eventually I, got, I caught eyes of some managers and stuff and you know, they helped build me up and that's how I'm here now. Um, like I said, you're very positive and I love that. Like it's quite infectious how positive you are. Um, you said you didn't feel good this morning. So how do you cope with that? Because there's a lot of us in the world, we wake up, we don't want to go to work, or we're not feeling mentally great. What's your coping mechanisms? I don't even know if it's really like a coping mechanism, but sometimes you just, you just got to deal with it. You know, it's like, you can't just stop. You got to keep moving forward. You got to keep going, you know? So I just think, you know, there's not really any, I, I think the special recipe is, just do it, you know? You, you have to, you just gotta do it. Yeah, I suppose you feel worse if you don't do it, so you just gotta do it, and you do yeah. feel better at the end of it. So, my last one, you came in here talking about chicken wings. Have you heard we got a Nando's in the UK? Have you heard of Nando's? I, I, I heard about it recently this week. I, I heard it's really good. There you go, that's it's, where you get, that's where you get your wings. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy it, well done tonight. Thank you. Cool, thank you everybody.